coconut rhinoceros beetle has been in existence in Papua New Guinea for decades. It is said to be an indigenous food to some parts of the country. Both the adult coconut rhinoceros beetle and its lover are both edible, especially in the Momase region and parts of West Papua. Recently, the coconut rhinoceros beetle has been an issue of concern throughout the Pacific region. This beetle is a regional problem. The coconut rhinoceros beetle, or CRB, comes in two variants. Number one is susceptible to the virus that is used as a natural enemy to the beetle, and number two is resistant to the virus. This virus was introduced into the region in order to mitigate the spread of the beetle. The beetle that is susceptible has spread throughout the region. It has caused extensive damages to coconut palm trees. Since 2007, there was another strain of this beetle that was resistant to the virus, which was detected in Guam. Since then, the coconut rhinoceros beetle has spread to many parts of the Pacific region. In the last 10 years, it has accelerated and spread into PNG, Solomon Islands and Vanuatu, and other Pacific Island countries, causing serious damage to the coconuts in some parts, killing the whole coconut palm trees. PNG is the second Pacific country to record the presence of the coconut rhinoceros beetle. The project that we are uh, under um, is, is funded by MFED and it covers uh, Solomon Islands, uh, Papua New Guinea uh, and, uh, and Vanuatu. So the, the, we, we are covering those, uh, those three countries uh, and in PNG our partners are Nakia, Kik uh, and uh, also uh, PNG Opera. Uh, and uh, we are looking at uh, particularly the, uh, the, the management efforts. So we use the uh, existing uh, management, uh, management, uh, uh, management uh, 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 options that are available to try and uh, assist the, the countries to, to control the, the beetle. This research focuses primarily at improving the biocontrol program initiated by this group of scientists together with help from partnering organizations throughout the Pacific region. How uh, we can try and improve the, the management program uh, to contain the beetle. So the beetle is spreading and uh, so for the countries where we have the beetle, uh, we'll need to uh, implement the, the management efforts to contain them. And then for the countries and territories that do not have the beetle, uh, we assist with the awareness program uh, so that they can monitor and then try to prevent the beetle from entering the countries. Dr. Mark elaborates further on how the beetle attacks coconut trees. In terms of uh, the control, uh, the beetle, because of the way in, uh, in which it attacks the, the coconut, it's the adult that, uh, that attacks the coconut. Uh, so it burrows through the, the base of the coconut and then it goes into what we call the apical meristem, that's the, the growing point, and then it feeds on the, the sap within the coconut. So if you tr want to control that with, uh, uh, with chemical, it's almost impossible for the, uh, and also looking at the height of the pumps, it's too high for you to use any chemical, uh, uh, just a chemical control to control that. So we do it uh, through an integrated program where we use a different approach. And uh, we sort of strongly emphasize uh, the biological control. Apart from the virus that has been used as a way of mitigating the spread of the beetle, there is also a fungus that can be applied. There is a commercial strain that is available, uh, which is uh, uh, a, a company in Malaysia produces that. So we can uh, we we we've been importing that, uh, and what you do is you build. Uh, 
the artificial, what we call artificial breeding site, where you build small boxes using uh, organic matter and then attract the beetles to come and then breed within that and then you apply the, uh, the fungus, it, it's called metarism. So you apply that and then it infects the larval as well as the adult uh, stages of the beetles. Those are the two biological controls that are available and are being used against the beetle. Another way of mitigating the spread of the coconut rhinoceros beetle is to clear out any organic matter that is moist, like dead logs and rubbish piles. These areas can be breeding grounds for the beetle. Dead coconut uh, stumps are standing, then uh, they breed in there. Uh, and also the oil palm, if uh, the palm trunks have fell for replanting, they do breed in there. Uh, and any rubbish, uh, domestic rubbish that are piled, they, they breed in there. So the management of those organic matter where they breed in uh, is, is very critical. So we encourage for the, 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 yeah, the sanitation, the cleaning up of those organic matter. Cleanliness of rubbish and organic matter such as dead tree logs can act as breeding grounds for these pest beetles. As part of the alertness program, the team also do awareness and trainings to local communities and growers to take ownership of the program in terms of controlling the beetle from spreading. Partners are encouraged to use the management skills in order to mitigate the coconut rhinoceros beetle from spreading. This was Dr. Mark's appeal to Papua New Guineans, mostly in the coastal areas who depend on coconut trees for food and for commercial purposes as well. If they detect any beetle or any damage on their coconut, then they need to report that immediately to either Kik or to Nakia, and then they can uh, go, have, uh, uh, go and inspect and, and see if it is beetle damage and uh, they will advise accordingly on how they can be able to, to manage the beetle. Local communities are encouraged to report to the Coconut Industry Corporation Extension Offices if they see any unusual sightings of dead coconut trees. Dr. Trevor Jackson was also a participant in the recent survey team to PNG. He said the beetle infestation has just started in some parts of the country. The beetle infestation has just started in some parts of PNG and where this new invasive strain has entered the, the country, um, it is very bad. And you can see that very clearly around Port Moresby, the National Capital District. According to the group's investigation, Medang has been identified as one important coconut producing province in PNG. Upon the team's survey, they've identified some hotspots where the beetle is breeding in. Where the pest is, is very bad uh, is along the southern coast from Port Moresby. Uh, in both directions and we can see in some of the peripheral areas of, of Port Moresby um, 70 to 80 percent of the coconuts have been lost, the coconut palms. Some areas of concern include parts of the Medang province and areas along the Markham Valley as well. This group of scientists have however discovered some good news amidst their findings. Papua New Guinea has some form of indigenous natural substances that seem to be working against the coconut rhinoceros beetle, limiting its spread. It is understood these natural indigenous substances are in our bushes and work against this deadly coconut rhinoceros beetle. This is then helping to contain it. Upon this interesting finding in Papua New Guinea, this group of scientists are now trying to identify this natural indigenous substance in the country and perhaps spread them to other hotspot areas where the beetle is infesting. Dr. Jackson described PNG as one of the world's centers of biodiversity. It is amazing for me, uh, the, the comparison in looking um, within in coconut logs in, in PNG compared with other countries. Uh, there are such a range of insects and other, other little animals um, working there together. 
And so I think I think though that that also gives a, a strength to the environment, you know, so that uh, and maybe preventing this insect doing doing its worst for you. The most invasive beetle currently of concern to our coastal areas is the G-type beetle, initially discovered in Guam. The other type of the coconut rhinoceros beetle is the S-type that is less damaging and can be kept under control. This project is fully supported by PNG's Coconut Industry Corporation and Nakia and is funded by the Government of New Zealand and implemented by Pacific Communities.